Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I'm going to show the workflow on this shot of M104, the Sombrero Galaxy. This shot is a rare one for me because I just have over five hours of integration time on this. Uh, if you're one of my regulars, you'll know that I typically run 20 to 30 hours of total integration time, especially on Galaxy shots like this. So. We're going to see if uh, just five hours is enough. The reason for the short integration time has simply been uh, terrible weather. Uh, in central Texas, it's been really rough for astrophotography. It's usually the most unstable season uh, for us during the year, but this year in particular, it's lots of rain, lots of clouds. You know, that said, I can't really complain too much. We've been dealing with a severe drought for the past few years, and um, uh, so hopefully this year uh, we'll at least uh, take care of that, fill that lake up. And I have been able to get some shots uh, during this terrible weather at night, uh, stuff like these. And uh, after I show this, I'm going to finish this video by showing a number of my um, in-progress stuff. So because the weather has pretty much put everything on hold, I've got a lot of stuff that um, uh, I'm waiting for clear skies to finish. So I'll give everyone a sneak peek at those. All right, so let's get started on this uh, Sombrero Galaxy. So this is the uh, Luminance, and it's just 88 minutes. That's it. And uh, here's uh, red and uh, green and blue. Now, uh, the RGB, that's 80 minutes worth of exposure for each channel. I did uh, 20, uh, 240 second uh, subs on that. So, I mean, that's all I had. And what I decided to try to do to help with the luminance is I did a separate integration where I stacked uh, the luminance and the RGB into a single uh, stacked image and this is what I ended up with this uh, M for master master luminance uh, don't mind these little donuts here we'll uh, take care of them with clone stamp real easy uh, if we take another look at this here I mean, you can see the the details and the dust lanes are very soft here. Um, I do use Blur Exterminator and I use uh, Unsharp Mask to squeeze as much detail as I can out of this. All right, so let's uh, let's step through some of the changes here. So, obviously, the first thing I did with this Master Luminance is run dynamic background extraction. Then I run Blur Exterminator, and we can already see that Blur Exterminator did a nice job. I mean, it's such a short amount of integration, right? So there's only so much Blur Exterminator can do with uh, limited data here. Uh, then I stretched it, and you're seeing different levels of stretching. I just did the regular histogram stretch on this one and then I remove stars. Now normally I would remove the stars before I start stretching uh, but I just I forgot to do it <laughs> and so I decided I was just going to use the RGB stars and I didn't go back and redo this I just ran with this. So anyway this is where we ended up with uh, with our luminance at this stage here. So I mean I mean we can even see a little bit of galaxies. I mean I'll be honest with you right off the bat I'm going to try to get more data on this. I really would like to get about 15 20 hours on this to resolve these uh all this dust better. Uh but you know I, I don't know if I'm going to get that with this weather. All right. So the RGB I used LRGB combination tool to put them together. Uh, you can see dynamic background extraction was run against this. Uh, then I'm doing color calibration. You don't see much changes here because I've already got this stretched. 
uh, but for color calibration I use the uh, uh, image solver script and then I used for the color uh, the SPCC color calibration. Alright, so next I did um, Blur Exterminator again, same same settings. Uh, at this stage I made a clone right here and then I removed the stars. So we're still linear at this stage. Uh, and then I blurred the image out using Noise Exterminator. I just maxed the uh, noise reduction setting and removed all of the uh, sharpening because I just want to blur this out uh, to smooth out any color noise. Uh, then I start stretching. And here's where I added the uh, luminance. And now you're going to see that I'm going to do some work on here. we got a mask in there. Uh, what I've done is I just pulled the luminance, <laughs> the luminance after I had combined everything and uh, used that as a mask uh, to, in this case, darken the background. And now I'm reversing the mask to do some work on the, uh, on the galaxy itself. And this is actually a pretty good method of generating a mask and doing work in specific areas uh, instead of using a range mask sometimes. Sometimes a range mask is kind of a little bit too much of a, a brute force. And so I'm just going to skip through the different steps. It's mostly uh, curves work. Oh yeah, let's, uh, let's go over this here. All right, so obviously I've got some stuff in the image train. It's this one spot. You're seeing it as a result on both sides as a result of uh, Meridian flips. And uh, I need to update my flats yet again. Uh, it's been very windy out and there's debris getting in there. Uh, but anyway, with galaxy shots, this is easy to fix as long as it's not anywhere on the galaxy. You just clone stamp will take care of this. So I'll just demonstrate this really quick. I'll make a clone here. And we go to clone stamp. Now the background's already fairly neutral, uh, so you click in there to highlight it. Uh, you set the radius, 250 is the maximum radius, and then you hold your left control key and you click. And now it puts an anchor in there, and we just, boom, there, gone. And same deal there, boom. And of course, once you're done, you hit the little checkbox, and that saves the settings, and then you close clone stamp, and you go on about your processing. So that's where we are here. And yeah, I mean, it's basically just some curves work, and I ended up over here. Now really, this was quick processing. I, I didn't take it too seriously initially, because it was just five hours, and I was this is more of a curiosity to see uh, what I had, but... Uh, anyway, so here are the stars, and I used arc sine h stretch to get the initial stretch going, and then I did a little bit of histogram, and uh, increased saturation. Notice we got some green in there. I think I overcooked the stars a little bit here. I uh, used SCNR tool to remove the green, invert. The reason we got to do this, it treated almost like narrowband stars, is that uh, there. So when you subtract green, it'll pull purple out. And uh, so yeah, we're going to invert, subtract green again. And uh, yeah, this is what we ended up with with our stars. And like I said, I think I overcooked it. I like colorful stars, but I think I pushed the saturation a little bit too much. And so I added the stars back to the image, and this is what I got for the final image. Let me uh, get rid of that preview here. I mean, I guess it's okay for five hours. I never shot M104 before. This was my first time. Uh, and so I did want to try it out this season. I had planned to shoot it. But um, I really hope to get more time on this. So let's take a look here. I mean, it's it's okay. I guess it's not bad for five hours. I mean, you can definitely see hints of structure in that dust. But uh, 
I, I definitely want to get more time on this. I'd really like to do, I know that I know my setup can do a better job of resolving this. It just needs more time. So now hopefully I can get at least another 10, 12 hours on this. Oh, uh, let's, uh, let's rotate this. Fast rotate and clockwise 90 degrees. There we go. That's the more familiar way of looking at it. It looks better this way, right? <laughs> All right. So anyway, there you go. Quick shot M104, just five hours of integration uh, taken with the Celestron Edge HD8 and the ASI 294 Mono astronomic deep sky filters and um, all this riding on a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. And as promised, let me uh, show you what I've been working on, some of the stuff that's been going on here. Uh, this is with the Ascar 65PHQ. Uh, it's only like eight hours, uh, LDN 900, so this is in the Cygnus region. I got some nice dark nebula with all the HA and a little bit of reflection in there. So I thought this would be a cool, uh, cool region to image. And um, given that it's around Cygnus, I'm pretty confident that I'll get more time on this. I mean, Cygnus is going to be available all, all through the summer, right? So yeah, surely I'm, I'm going to get some clear moonless nights to finish this one. So it's a quick edit as well, just to kind of uh, see where I'm at. And, yep, it's on pause until I get better better weather. Uh, another target near Cygnus, this time with the AT115 EDT. I've been going after uh, Crescent. This time I set the framing up so I can get that soap bubble, which you can see down here. So this is like, um, I don't know, like 12 hours or so. And it doesn't look bad. Um, if you zoom in, the stars are actually not good. I had a... Um, I had a uh, issue with um, with the guider. It was uh, uh, pointed in the wrong direction. Basically, what happened is we had some really windy days, and I had the scope cover on it, and I think the wind was pushing the, against the um, the rings that I have for the guide scope, and it the uh, little rail that the guide scope saw and rotated a little bit, and I didn't catch that, and it, the end result was some flexure going on. So I fixed that and st stars should be better going forward. Uh, but anyway, I think it's coming along, so surely I'll have enough time to finish this. I'd like to sink, I don't know, another 10 hours or so in this one before calling it good. Now, since I did this quick process, I did grab more HA, and here's a star list of the HA, so it's really giving you a nice idea. This region is just so cool with all the uh, the dust back there. And even in the HA, the uh, soap bubble is showing up pretty good. All right, uh, another shot with the AT-115 EDT is NGC 4745, uh, what I've been affectionately calling the Big Wheel Galaxy. So I shot this last year with the Edge. This time I'm taking a wider shot. Uh, I definitely want to get more time on this. Uh, I feel like I need more luminance to better resolve this. And these um, these tidal streams around here, I want to do pick up more. There's more here. Uh, but this one, given its location right around the coma and uh, the time of the year, I don't know if I'm going to get more time on this. I think... My strategy for this, assuming we get some clear nights, since I've already started moving around Cygnus, is I will use this as a parking target uh, for the AT-115 EDT while I wait for Cygnus to get higher. And I've accumulated some good time doing that parking target strategy. So hopefully I can add some more time to this and... Um, and finish it out. If if the weather is just not with us, I may I may reprocess this again. I don't believe I uh, drizzled this shot, uh, and maybe put it a little bit more care on the processing, and then push it out. Uh, M101 has been in the news a lot lately. Well, here's a shot of M101 I took with the AT115 EDT, but this is from last year, and I just kind of sat on the data. Uh, I don't even remember how much integration time is in this. I think it's like 
10 to 15 hours. I just was never really too satisfied with uh, the results I was getting. I reprocessed it recently, um, and this is the result. And I mean, it's okay. It's all right. It's not. It's not going to win any awards. And of course, I don't have the um, the recent supernova because it's this is from last year. Uh, I think my biggest problem with this shot is the framing. I'm just not happy with with this framing, and I think that's why I've been sitting on this. So I don't know if I'll ever push this image out to Astral Bin or or what. But I mean, there's no amount of cropping or anything I can do that can fix this framing issue. Maybe if the if it was at an angle, right? Maybe that would have worked better. Uh, but I think I was just pushing it too hard with the field of view with this scope matched with an ASI 1600 it just wasn't wasn't enough field of view I think to really frame this target up now a competitor for time on with M104 is M101 and with the news of the supernova I decided that I wanted to try uh, to get some uh, data on M104. Plus, I already shot M M101 um, a couple years ago, and even with the supernova in there now, I think I want to get more LRGB data and add it to what I got a couple years ago to see uh, how that turns out. So, of course, I made this decision when the moon was out, and that means HA. So, this is, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe five hours of HA, four hours of HA. Uh, I think this right here is the supernova. So kind of cool seeing it in HA like this. All right, so that's what I got. Um, drop a note in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback on how this M104 shot turned out. And let me know what you guys are shooting with and uh, shooting this season and let me know what you guys have been doing to keep yourself busy if the weather has been terrible <laughs> like it has been for me. Alright so with that clear skies.